All right, uh, let's play Endless ATC once again. It's a air traffic control simulator, which um, isn't really everyone's cup of tea, but I quite enjoyed it. I've been playing different um, ATC simulators for a long time, uh, but I came across this one on Steam. It's by a developer called Start Grid, I believe, um, but it's really probably the most accurate um, game and probably the most fun as well that I've played um, in quite some time. I'm going to be giving you a couple of beginner's tips to help you play along and to get started into the game. Uh, it's very cheap on Steam, so even if you buy it and play it once, uh, really you can get some, some decent value out of it. Um, when you start out the game, you get a choice of eight different airports. You can uh, come here to Schiphol, there is London, uh, Frankfurt, Atlanta, Paris, um, Charles de Gaulle, um, JFK in New York, um, Tokyo, and there is also Toronto. The easiest way to, uh, the easiest one to start on is probably the ones that have only one active runway. Um, Things like, um, I think Frankfurt starts out with just one major active runway. Uh, London's very difficult because you start out with one, but eventually you can have uh, London Heathrow, London Gatwick, London City. Um, so it gets it gets pretty hairy when you're dealing with uh, four different airports, aircraft coming in and leaving four different airports at the same time. Uh, it gets pretty wild. So uh, I wouldn't recommend London, although, you know, it is quite nice, uh, nicely set out. And if you're looking to have a challenge rather quickly, London is, is, is one of my favorites. I've been asked to take a look at Schiphol, so I've been playing around with that a little bit. Um, it seems that the uh, you, you start out with Schiphol Amsterdam, but you also have the Rotterdam airport over here. So so you have to bear in mind that once you kind of get into the game a little bit, that um, things are going to start getting uh, pretty packed full of aircraft coming into Amsterdam, but also you're trying to manage the ones going to Rotterdam. So how do we manage uh, the aircraft they had, that you have on your screen? Well, you have a ring around your main airport that is 30 nautical miles. And uh, the way it goes is that when an aircraft gets into that ring, it becomes your responsibility to deal with that. So how do we deal with the aircraft? Well, for the first thing you need to do is take a look at the aircraft themselves. You can zoom in and out uh, just with the mouse wheel over here. And the, all this over here gives you all the information you need. You can change that by clicking on the, I think it's display, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, the labels. Labels in the display section. Um, and you can change it to a very short, uh, I think that's the American style that you can have. Um, I prefer this one because it shows you the aircraft type. That's a, a Boeing 737, for example. Um, and it really just uh, gives you a lot of information about the um Aircraft. So what kind of information are they getting? Well, that's the call sign of the aircraft, KLM4302. Um, it is currently at 7,000 feet. You can tell by 070. And if I tell it to move up or down, that number is going to change. So the I'm telling it to go down to 3,000 feet. That is the desired. It's currently at 7,000 because, of course, when you tell an aircraft to move, it's not going to just automatically do that. There's always a lag time, a lead time. Think about the aircraft in the sky and you are giving this pilot instructions. He needs to now follow out those instructions or carry out the instructions. So you can see he's slowly descending now down to 3,000 feet. Um, on to behind that uh, or lower than that is the aircraft type. Um, and lower than that is the current aircraft direction. That's the heading. It's at heading 250. Um, and the... Um, Oh, sorry, that is uh, not the heading, that's the speed. That's the uh, speed of the aircraft. It currently wants to be at 220 knots, and it's currently at 240. So looking at this one over here, um, it's uh, MSR1V, uh, and it's also at 7,000 feet. So if I tell him to go down to 4,000, for example, that one changes, and he will slowly start descending down to 4,000. He's a, Vo a Boeing uh, 737, and he's currently traveling at 275 knots, and he wants to get down to 250. So why is that important? Let me start a, a new airport here just to kind of refresh the aircraft. Why is that important? Well, um, there are three main ways that you can control an aircraft. Um, the one is by their altitude, and that's the main one, because you, want, you never want an aircraft to be um, at the same height 
uh, this ring around the aircraft. If another aircraft's ring gets kind of intersects with that, then uh, the aircraft are too close to each other. And it's known as a separation incident, which you see over here. Uh, otherwise known as a deal by um, ATC people in the lingo. Um, so you never want to deal. And the way you do that is by controlling, first of all, the altitude of the aircraft. So how high they are above the ground. If this one's currently at 7,000 feet, um, but I want to get him down to about 3,000, 4,000 feet so that he can land um, at Schiphol. So I've told him now to get down to 3,000. I've also, and um, so that's the main way, it's just controlling their altitude. The second way that you control the uh, aircraft separation is with their speed. So this guy's currently traveling at 275 knots. By the time he hits um, the aircraft glide, the airport glide slope, I'll explain that in a second. Um, he's going to be want to be a lot slower than that. And as he's coming in for his final descent into the runway, he's going to want to be even slower. So that's the second way that you can control aircraft. You can tell him to go, uh, sorry, I'm changing his heading there. You can tell him to change the speed. I want him to go only 160 knots, for example. Um, I wouldn't do this, but you can tell them which speed to go. So if you've got two aircraft that are the same height, um, both of them at 3,000, for example, then you can have them traveling, one traveling at two, 250 knots, one traveling at 220 knots. You know that they will never uh, if the one with 250 is in the front, he will obviously be speeding up. It's like you're in a car. You know, you're on a highway. You're traveling on the same level on the highway. The faster cars, you want them to go first. So that's the way you deal with it. And the third way and the final way that you deal with aircraft, and this is when things are really getting quite tight, um, as you'll see when... Um, when you get quite packed in with aircraft, and there's a lot of them on the screen at the same time, you then need to work with their headings. And changing the heading of an aircraft um, isn't ideal. It obviously, you know, turning the aircraft wastes time, it wastes fuel. Um, pilots want to get somewhere as direct as possible, uh, you know, but it's often the shortest distance between two places is not always a straight line so uh, or the quickest distance, I should say, rather. So you want to change their heading as well. Um, and that's only if you haven't been able to change your altitude or change their speed, if that's not going to have an effect um, on the aircraft. So those are the three things that you deal with. And it looks really easy right now, but I can promise you after a few minutes um, at the helm, this thing starts getting rather crazy. So those are the things to look out for, and that's what you can read from the what's on the screen. Um, other things that you see on the screen, um, let me just deal with this guy quickly. Uh, he can only be at... 6,000. There we go. So other things you see on the screen are these, the whole lot of numbers, a um, whole lot of uh, 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 words, and these kind of all help you. So here's Schiphol Airport, right? This is the main airport. We're currently landing on runway 27. We're taking off from runway uh, 36L, uh, 36 left. Um, so th that's kind of the main thing. This 30 over here means that aircraft coming into this area, this little box around here, cannot be lower then flight level 3.0. That's flight level 3,000 feet. Um, so currently this guy's going for 3,000. That's fine. He's on the localizer. Um, I'll explain that in a second. Once he gets into this area, he is allowed to go down because he's, he's kind of on the glide slope of the runway. But people kind of traveling over or through this airspace are not allowed to be lower than flight level 3.0. Over here is the same. This is Rotterdam Airport. There's a ring around Rotterdam Airport that says you can't be lower than flight level three, um, three zero. So if I want to move this guy down to 2,000 feet, for example, I'm not allowed to do that because this is a restricted airspace. Uh, more so because he's coming over this area, which has a multitude of different airspace height restrictions, um, 25, 35, and 55. In other words, if he was to travel in this straight line that I've set him on um, at 55, and I, I tell them to go 2,000, then we're going to have some have some issues. So you need to look out for those. Then these are kind of little navigation aids, nav aids that can help you to um, to direct your aircraft. So I can tell this plane that's just come into my airspace, KLM 9425, I can tell him to head straight for that nav aid, the SPY. He will do so, and then he'll let me know when he's close by to it as well. Uh, I'm not going to keep him on that trajectory because it's just easier to send him straight down to the runway, but he will now do his turn gradually up to SPY, and when he gets there, he will let me know when he's about to hit it, 
and then he was just kind of hold in that position. Not ideal for him to hold, but it's a good way to control aircraft that are coming into your area straight away. So this guy, I know he's not going to land this way. He has to come around from the east and land heading in a westerly direction. So I need to get him around the airport first. How do I do that? Send him towards the SPY nav aid, drop his altitude already, not lower than 3,000 because I know that he's going to be traveling over that airspace. So I'll keep him at 3,000 and he'll be on his way. Now, I don't need to really worry about him until he gets to that point, but he'll let me know when that's the case. On top of that, you have aircraft that are um, taking off. Uh, so the ones in pink are all the ones that are taking off. So KLM 725 just said he was taking off and he wants to head out via the Leco nav aid out of my airspace. How do I do that? I tell him he can take the standard um, instruments departures. I think that's what that stands for. I just click on that. He goes to his desired altitude and I hand him off to the next controller. Um, so the takeoffs are a lot easier to manage than the landings. But remember that this guy is now going to be... Uh, increasing his altitude, turning back over the runway and disappearing. So I just want to make sure that he doesn't interfere with anybody too badly. Um, you know, get in anybody's way. Again, you don't want that thousand um, feet. You want to have that uh, no two planes on the same altitude. They have to be within a thousand feet of each other um, or more than a thousand feet of each other rather and so on. And that is really the basics of this game. It is moving aircraft um, where the way you want to get them to move in different directions towards different nav aids, um, coming in towards the runway at the desired height um, and at the desired speed. And how do we do that? So here's your runway, the landing runway, and the landing runway has a glide slope. On the glide slope, you'll see three little dots here. One, two, and three. Those are the different minimum altitudes that the aircraft must be in order to be in the glide slope to successfully make a landing at that runway. So these are in descending order from 4,000 feet to 3,000 feet to 2,000 feet. So if I send this aircraft past, if he only joins the glide slope at this point over here, he needs to be lower than 3,000 um, feet, otherwise he's not going to make it. However, remember there's a 3000 air restriction over here. So I have to get him to join the glide slope before then, before that point at 3000. So he should correct his course now. He'll join the runway and off he'll go. I'm going to send this guy off the same thing as before. He's just taken off. I'm going to send him to his maximum height, SID, that's standard instrument departure. Off he goes. I don't need to really worry about him. Uh, this is one that I sent off earlier. He's already at 67,000 feet, um, 6,700 rather, call it 7,000 feet. So I know that he's way above anybody who's going to be coming in below him over here. Uh, not probably good practice to send planes directly across your runway um, traffic, uh, but you know, especially Europe and uh, rather busier airports, things get quite tight. So you've got to move aircraft um around quickly. And ideally, you know, this is a game. So we don't want people to, it's not about uber realism and that sort of thing. It's more about just handling the aircraft rather than being thrown your way. Um, so, oh dear, I'm going to sneeze. Achoo! Bless me. So uh, I don't definitely don't want to send him backwards. So this guy is about to hit the runway. Oh, come on. Okay, as as is this fellow over here. And it's okay that they're both on the glide slope at the same time. This guy's going a little bit faster, but once he hits the there we go. Once he hits the localizer of the runway, um, he's going to kind of join without too much hassle. Uh, he'll slow down his speed, he'll maintain his height, and the two of them can land one after the other. Um, except when you have, um, not except, but uh, unless you have an aircraft that is marked with an H. That means that they are a heavy aircraft. The Boeing uh, 777 um is a pretty pretty heavy, heavy aircraft, I believe. I'm, I might be totally wrong here. But once this guy joins the localizer, as over here, you're going to see he'll get a little uh, marker behind his ring. There's that one over there. A little marker behind his ring indicates that any aircraft tra traveling after him must not be that close to him because it will 
mean that they are facing wake turbulence behind him. The engines, he's a big plane, uh, his engines are drawing up a lot of uh, uh, wake turbulence in there. Well, there's a lot of turbulence in his wake, that's how it works. Um, and so aircraft that are behind him are going to be unstable, it's not going to be a very safe landing. So we want to just make sure that the separation of these aircrafts is maintained. But you can see they've both attached the, the glide slope, they've hooked on to the localizer they're correcting without me doing anything to them um, and they will maintain their speed all the way down to uh, the runway hopefully uh, in the meantime i need to just make sure that uh, these guys are fine so 3000 26 uh, 87 this guy's fine nobody's going to interact with anybody over here that i need to worry about so that is the basics of um, endless ATC, and it, it really is just about uh, getting aircraft to where you want them to be um, without causing too much hassle, you know, for 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 all involved, and to make sure that they're safe um, and and that sort of thing. Um, it's a very fun game. It, the difficulty does ramp up very quickly as your score increases with every plane landing, with every plane taking off. Um, what you need to do is just kind of keep playing it's 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 easy at first for a reason um and it does get very difficult thereafter you can make things slightly more realistic with some speech when there's uh you know so imagine yourself as an air traffic controller sitting at skip skip hole in the radar tower um in the control tower and there are aircraft who are telling you what they're doing um and there's multiple of them at the same time. And that's what I really like about this game is that suddenly things get so frantic and there's nothing better than uh, successfully managing a tw two dozen planes at the same time. All of them at different heights, at different altitudes. They want different things. Uh, they need different things from you. This guy's going to tell Delta me... 268. We are near Spike Herbore. There we go. He just told me he's near SPY. So I actually need to now turn him towards the um, runway. But I know that there's going to be an aircraft coming in there. There's one coming in over there. Um, so now you need to start spacing them out. So I'm going Heading to... Heading 09 or 0, Delta 268. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start spacing them out. Heading 235, descend And that's altitude endless ATC. I mean, uh, I'm going to upload some more... Oh, KLM 231. The... Um, Readbacks do get a bit annoying when I'm trying to speak over them. But that's uh, that's essentially what this game is all about. It's about managing the aircraft, keeping them going at the right time, and looking at the information that it gives you to try and get people where they need to be safely. Um, you know, there's a lot of lives in your hands. It's not just the pilots uh, who are doing things. They need your help. Um, and, yeah, that's why I quite enjoy this game. It's, it's essentially just a giant project management uh, on a very rapid scale. So that's Endless ATC. My name is Jonathan, and this was a beginner's guide. I hope you like it. Bye-bye.